Hello, well, I'm back with another wonderful show. Now, as the show's progressing, I have been evolving. Different hairdo, uh, look at this, new jewelry. I've been shopping for clothes. Will it never end? I hate shopping, especially for clothes, because you have to try them on. And usually, sleeves are way too long, as well as uh, pant legs. You know, if I was rich, I'd have all my clothes tailor-made. Ah, to dream. Hey, I like to tell people, if you're gonna dream, dream big, it's free. Now, I'll be going to visit my son soon. He lives in China, and you bet, while I'm there, I'm gonna have some clothes made. And that added bonus, I'm gonna be able to find shoes that fit. Oh, it's so exciting. Speaking of exciting, today's show. And we're gonna get right on to it. Our first guest today, um, has many different hats. One of them is a real estate agent, and that's not how I met him, although that's how I remember him. His name is Scott McVetty. Time for us to get to know him. Hey, Scott. Hey, Nancy. What are you doing shaking oh. my hand? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. So, Scott, please have a seat. Thank you. And thanks again for coming on the show. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. All right, so I have a bunch of questions. Great. I just want to ta ask you where you're from originally. Are you from Chilliwack? No, from near Niagara Falls, Ontario. How near? What does that mean, near? <laughs> <laughs> About 20 minutes outside, the little, the little town called Fenwick, which nobody has heard of. So oh, okay. near Niagara Falls is the best way to explain it. So when did you come to Chilliwack? In 2000. And why? I came out here to get my pilot's license at the uh, Abbotsford Airport. I didn't know you had a pilot's license. Well, it's since expired. Oh, but, uh, so obviously you yeah. don't have a plane, eh? I don't have a plane, no. Turn, I'm no. disappointed because I was going to bum a ride, but you know, <laughs> now I can't. Yeah. Okay, so um, do you have siblings? I have one brother and one sister, both Are older than me. Mm -hmm. And where do they live? Uh, my brother's in Ottawa, my sister's in Kimberley, British Columbia. And they have children, and do you get to see them? And um, not often enough, but yeah, I have three nieces between the two of them. Right. Yeah. Now, I know you're married. Yes. Hi, Carlene. Um, did you meet her here? I met her here, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's you... from Abbotsford. All oh, right. So how did you meet? Uh, through work. Um, she worked at the office that I worked at, and that's how it happened. Okay. Now, let's go back a little bit, because um, apparently... We met at Toastmasters. Apparently we did. You just don't remember. I don't. <laughs> I honestly don't remember that. But yeah. it was just like I went one night as uh, like what there was. As a guest. Yeah. 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 So and, um, I'm sorry that fact that I don't remember. It's okay. I stalked you on Facebook and you somehow did. we became friends after that. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. And just so you know people, um, Scott is a real estate agent. So let's talk about that a little bit. Sure. When did you become an agent? In 2006. And what led you decide that? Well, again, I, I realized that flying careers were few and far between, and I was already in my 30s. So I decided maybe I could get a job where I could fly for fun. That was kind of my fantasy. I let the flying go, but I'm still a realtor. Okay, so you originally you wanted to do flying as a career? Is that what you're saying? That's why I came here to get a, yeah, to get ah, my commercial pilot's license. Okay. All right, so now, then you became an agent and um, you sold my house in four days, so I was really impressed by that. Uh, so it's been successful for you, I, I gather, right? I've 12 years, yeah, 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 it's been a good 12 years. That's really good. Now, I know there's something else new that you're doing in your life. You want, well, just something that you did over this weekend. Like, oh, uh, the improv. <laughs> <laughs> you can feel free to talk about symphony improv a little bit. Well, I, I guess I should thank you for that. It was your invitation that got me involved in it and uh, yeah it's been really really fun I maybe about six weeks now we've been practicing and rehearsing and we had our big shows this weekend at Rick Rack and the Whack. You mentioned cash mob in your bio. Yes. Now, a lot of people don't know what that is. It's kind of funny a lot of people think they don't know what it is and then I tell them about it and they're like oh I went to that oh. like a lot of people <laughs> but basically uh, my friend Dale Johnson he, it was kind of his idea and him and I co-founded Cash Mob Chilliwack, and the idea behind it is to help support local business, and we do that by organizing groups of people to go to the same business at the same time and spend a little bit of money. 
Okay, so how do you contact these people? Or it's it's all done through like social media, so Facebook and Twitter, and and um, I don't know if you remember those racist letters that were written to the Indian food restaurants in town. No, I don't. It it was a little blip on the news radar for a week or two um, across the country. Actually, I had people in Ontario that even heard about it. Right. So we organized a cash mob for the Indian food restaurants, and we had fifteen hundred people show up that day. Oh, wow. They have 84 seats between those two restaurants, so it was chaos, but it was good. And, oh, my goodness. And uh, the people of Chilliwack let whoever wrote that letter know that he didn't speak for the rest of us. Right. Oh, what a marvelous thing to do. I love yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, so if somebody wanted to join the Cash Mob, how would they do that? They should like us on Facebook, on Cash Facebook. Mob Chilliwack. And, and uh, we haven't done one in a while. We, we kind of, after that, we changed our focus to, to be more about causes and not just, uh, you know, we were kind of like the ice bucket challenge in the start where it was a social cause but with a little bit of a gimmick right. and so people were, it was getting harder and harder to get people out so now we don't do as many mm -hmm. and there's always a social cause which helps bring people out for it. Okay, so what other than the, the Indian restaurants, what else have you done? We did one for Marty's Grill when it was still around, when Marty was in a coma in the hospital and their bank accounts were shut down. So we had a cash-only cash mob for that. We had about 450 people show up for that. And <laughs> oh my goodness. We did a cash mob for the Chilliwack Chiefs. We had 700 and some odd um, extra fans come to that game right. just for the, the cash mob. So yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good thing and it's a, it's a good way of volunteering for the community. We don't get paid for that. We don't spend yeah. any money. We don't make any money. We don't handle any money. We just let, let, we let people know and they show up and then the rest happens. All right, all right. That is really cool. Um, now, you mentioned that uh, you met your wife uh, at the place, same place of business, yes. right? Now, is that real estate or? At the Remax office, yes. Okay, so she's there now? She works for a development company. So she's in and out of the office every once in a while. Now, obviously, you're enjoying being part of the improv team, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so that's really good. Okay, Scott, I know you were involved with TEDx. Now, not everybody knows what TEDx is, so could you tell us what it is and what your involvement was? Sure. Well, we've had two TEDx events in Chilliwack, and most people have heard of what a TED talk is. Um, TED, the governing body, I guess you'd call it, they give out sub-licenses to smaller communities to have their own events with their own setup and policies and that sort of thing. So those are all called TEDx. Okay. So I was involved in TEDx Chilliwack. Last year was the first year and I was a speaker. I talked about Cash Mob as we just talked about here for the commercial. And this year I started off as being a, like a coach or a mentor for some of the speakers. And um, somewhere along the lines I ended up helping organize it too a little bit so it was yeah it was a really big event it was you know early April we have another event planned for next April of next year okay so if somebody wanted to be part of TEDx as a speaker what do they do we're gonna have a call for nominations uh, probably uh, late this year maybe in, before uh, Christmas or just after Christmas so somebody has to be nominated you can nominate yourself, oh, I but see. yes, there needs to be some information on basically what you'd be talking about and what qualifies you to talk about it. Right. And yeah, that's kind of how it starts. They actually have auditions. Okay. And I, I believe we're the only, the only TEDx event in the world that has auditions. So it's a little bit like The Voice where we have, you know, a third of the, the nominees would show up at the Cottonwood Four Cinemas. Right and they would do a, a little four-minute presentation based on what they would talk about in their full TED Talk, and, and the judges would pick who goes on, and the audience gets to vote for one participant to go on as well. So um, what's the length of the full talk? TED can be anything up to 18 minutes. Oh, okay. So it's, it, I've seen some as short as five minutes, and I've seen some that are right up to the 18-minute mark. It depends on what your talk needs. What does TED mean? What does it stand for? Oh, I don't even re remember. Technology, Education, and Design. That's what, the, it's an acronym. So oh. it, it started off back in the like, late 70s, apparently, in, in California with mm -hmm. a bunch of like-minded people in those three disciplines. It, it's broader now, and uh, it involves more things. Uh, the motto is ideas worth spreading or sharing, so that's kind of what the, anything that 
is worth sharing, is worth talking about. So where do you have the main event? At the, at the GW Graham Theatre okay. here in Chilliwack. How many people that are la can sit in the... It holds, I think, 450. Wow. We, um, with our license, we were limited to fewer than that, but it's still enough to have a nice full room, and, and it's, a, it's a good day. Oh, yeah, right. Worth coming out to. Great. Now let's switch the subject a little bit, because, like, you know, we can. Um, I know you play the guitar. Is that correct? <laughs> Not very well. <laughs> Not in public. But Not in yes. public. Oh, okay. So I thought earlier you were offering, to, well, off camera, that you were offering to play music for us. No? Well, I was trying to be funny. Oh, but, uh, all right. Darn. <laughs> I can play. I've uh, only played live in front of people maybe two or three times. So right. Uh... So when you're not working and when you're not involved with uh, TEDx, what do you do? Like what, you know, hobbies or anything like that? Leisure? Uh, well, my wife and I are both in Chilliwack Toastmasters. We've been there since 2011, I think. The end of 2011 we joined. Right. And that's a lot of fun. I think we've both grown quite a bit from doing that. It's, uh, it's actually pretty amazing. I know it, it was, uh, it's a lot of work, but it's, uh, there's a lot of reward involved in it as well. Yeah, right. I mean, I was at Toastmasters, so I understand what you're saying. Um, okay, now, you, you've met my sister Marie, correct? Yes. Because you sold her house, which <laughs> yes. is really cool. Now, Marie's always claiming to be taller than I am. So now, now you have to be honest here. I'm on television, I yeah, guess. Yeah, exactly. I, yes. Now, who's taller, me or Marie? Remember, you're on camera. Yeah. No you, lying. You should tease your hair a little bit. Then it'd be easily you. But it's me anyway. Yeah, I think, I think you got her by a hair. Marie, you hear that? I'm taller. OK? All right. Um, so we got that out of the way. Yep. Um, now, OK, so you, you just, the only thing you and your wife do other than Work as uh, Toastmasters? Well, we're renovating our house. We have a, Ooh. we had a one year renovation that we just finished our fourth year on. <laughs> so <laughs> we're about 85% done. We're, we're doing the fun stuff now. Which is what? Which is building the deck and- That's fun, okay. Yes, All yes. Right. It's a lot more fun than putting tiles down in your kitchen and that sort of thing. So, so yeah. you've done a, like totally- It was pretty much a gut, yeah. Yeah, but it's, uh, we have a nice spot, a nice little street, and we're going to make it ours. Now let's get back to, to improv again. Okay. Because I want to know, of all the team members, <laughs> who's your favorite? Well, it has to be you, <laughs> until somebody else asks me. <laughs> I'm just wondering if there's anything that um, I haven't asked that you would like to talk about. Well, um, I, we, I think we touched on it, but yeah, for Cash Mob, I don't know when the next one's going to be, but on Facebook, Cash Mob Chilliwack, go there and like us and you'll get information. Same with TEDx Chilliwack, go on to Facebook and you can be put on our mailing list. And if you know anybody who's a great speaker with a great idea, nominate them and we'll get them on for the show for sure. We're out of time, but I appreciate you being here, and um, maybe we'll see you again sometime. Yes, well, thank you for having me. And maybe we'll see you at Improv. Maybe you will. <laughs> so listen, stay tuned, because there's a whole other half of the show. <laughs>